Griffintown and Point St. Charles. Two working class neighborhoods, just south of downtown Montreal, became very important industrial communities in southwestern Quebec, close to the downtown core and accessible to the Lachine Canal and the Grand Trunk Railway. For most people, the neighborhood they grew up in is very important to them in their early years growing up. What you see every day, the environment you're surrounded by, shapes the way you perceive the world around you. For the people of Griffintown and Point St. Charles, their neighborhoods have either changed drastically or disappeared altogether. And when the neighborhoods are revisited, it becomes about what used to be there. The Irish famine of the 1840s and 1850s was a devastating blow to the population of Ireland. It is estimated that there were over one million deaths and as many one million emigrated out of Ireland and as one million more in the next three generations after the famine. The people were fortunate enough to escape the famine, fled to Great Britain and to North America. In the United States, they landed in cities such as Chicago, Boston, New York City. In Canada, they settled in Halifax, Quebec, and Montreal. Around the 1840s, at the height of the famine, there was roughly 30,000 Irish immigrants arriving in Montreal every year. Most of them settled in neighborhoods of Point St. Charles, Griffintown, and Goose Village. They were not only the ones who settled in these neighborhoods. There was a mix of Irish, English, Scottish, and French Canadians. The area was also settled by many Ukrainian and Polish families. All of these immigrants found jobs in the industrial parks, in the numerous factories, shipping yards, and for the railways. There were thousands that were fortunate enough to survive the famine and the long journey to North America, there were also thousands that were not so lucky and didn't make it. There were severe cases of typhus at the time and thousands of immigrants died in fever sheds along the Montreal Harbour. Right at the foot of the Victoria Bridge on Bridge Street in Point St. Charles stands a large black rock weighing over 30 tons surrounded by an iron fence decorated with shamrocks. The rock was lifted out of the river in 1859 by steel workers who were building the Victoria Bridge. They wanted to pay tribute to the thousands of Irish immigrants who died of typhus in 1847 and are buried in mass graves there today. Today the rock stands as a tombstone as it is an actual mass grave for over 6,000 Irish immigrants who never made it to Point St. Charles and Griffintown. Every year the parishioners from St. Gabriel's church march from Point St. Charles to Black Rock and have a small ceremony to remember those who perished in 1847. When the Irish settled they were working class and they were poor, living in a working class neighborhood. Communities started developing in the early 1900s. The industrial slums were actually turning into neighborhood communities. The Irish were Catholic and so the community centered around the church. There were two churches that families could go to on Center Street in Point St. Charles, St. Gabriel's Parish, and St. Anne's Parish in Griffintown. Both of these parishes were attended by poor working class people, unlike St. Patrick's Basilica, uptown Montreal, which was attended by more of a professional class, doctors, lawyers, teachers. In the 1870s, St. Gabriel's in Point St. Charles was attended by both Irish and French Catholics, despite their cultural differences. But in 1883, when the French population began to outnumber the Irish, a bigger French church was erected right next door. St. Gabriel's Parish is today one of the centers for the Irish community in Montreal. St. Anne's in Griffintown was demolished in 1970, as was most of Griffintown. It is a historical site today, although all that is left is the perimeter of the foundation and a few park benches facing what would have been the church's altar. The Irish immigrants lived in housing which for the times was inexpensive. Very few owned any land or buildings. A lot of them lived off Center Street in duplexes and triplexes which were made from a pinkish reddish brick 
unique to Point St. Charles, Griffintown, and parts of St. Henry. The following few generations moved westward and lived and bought homes in Verdun, LaSalle, NDG, and West Island. Today, the Irish community is a society that remembers. They remember why and under what circumstances their ancestors came from and what hardships they encountered on the way to Montreal and the struggles they encountered while forging a community of their own. It's hard to imagine that many of the Irish descent in Montreal cannot go back to the neighborhoods they grew up in, which were demolished only a few decades ago. The Montreal Irish community is strong and proud. Proud to be from a working class neighborhood. Proud to be from Point St. Charles and Griffintown, even if the neighborhoods have changed or disappeared altogether. Proud of what they have contributed to Montreal and proud to be Irish.